We know there are many choices in internet radio and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery, a reality radio show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who shares. I'm joined here by my co-host and author of Shape by the Masters. How are you doing today? Welcome to another day of Joy in My House. We've got another day, another day of Joy in My House. How was your week? My week's amazing right now. Okay, all right. My week's amazing. Okay. Last week I spoke about Ashley, who's a uh, founder of Limitless Conferences, Limitless Ministries, and we started hanging out and spending some time, and it was a lot of amazing God time there. I'm glad. I'm really glad. I remember her. Her testimony is quite inspiring. It's not was. It's quite inspiring. She's out there, and I'm glad that you've been praying for someone in the ministry. I have. Okay, so we'll see. God, you want me to do this? Okay. Please help me out. All right. And he answers prayers. I want to thank all of our listeners and viewers out there for being a part of the joy that we have in our house mm-hmm. here on the network's website, www.latalklive.com. This is Joy in My House. It's an inspirational show that allows a platform for us to share the work that God has done in our lives and continues to do. Right. So I hope our listeners and viewers out there get touched by our guests because we have such an array of we guests do. and amazing we really do. stories. It's just amazing that the God that we serve, how diverse he is, I mean doesn't matter nationality color economic bra- bracket background. background it doesn't matter but the thing that is so awesome is how he's taken each person who's come here who's had a lot of trials tribulations and how he's taken it and turned it around and he's used it for his glory and that's, that's right, what's important i think that's the most important part right. i think we forget that it's not about us all the time no it's never about us <laughs> i'm not forgetting that it's <laughs> never <laughs> <laughs> never, never, ever. And when we think it is, you know, exactly. he steps that's in. Get, that's when we get in trouble. Yeah, he steps in. But know that our network's website on www.latalklive.com, if you click on shows, you can watch all of our archive episodes here on the network's website. Just join my house and pick the date. And you can watch all of our past guests. Because mm-hmm. last week we had an amazing guest by the name of Raul Gonzalez, oh. who was one of the directors of he, Children's Hospital He's going to take Angeles. us there. Right? I really want to go. Yes, so has he it. called you to set it up? You know what's interesting is... Um, I work with pro fighters, right? And his son is an amateur fighter. Are you kidding? And he met with me Friday morning at the crack of dawn. Wow! And are you going to train him? I don't want to train or teach anymore. Okay, but whatever yeah. God has. Right. I was just sizing him up. He wanted some direction. Okay. He did ask me if I would. I told him I'd have to pray about it. Oh, okay. Well, that's awesome. But I do want to go to the children's hospital. Yes, they have an amazing. I was telling people all there. week about, especially for us minorities, to give our blood and our platelets and our bone marrow. That you know. Ministry is incredible how he's on the front line for saving people's lives in a different way. That's right. And so I really want to go and see those children. It's a reality check. It really is. And God uses all of our gifts. Yes, he does. All of our talents. Yes, he does. If you submit to him, if you allow him to work in your life. That's right. That's right. You know, we see a lot of these ball players and a lot of these athletes. They use their gifts for monetary reasons. Some do. Some do. But some do not. Right. As we have today. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bill Henderson, he's an author of. God's radical remen, uh, remnant, remnant, I want to enunciate, but he was also part of the power team and now the Sons of Thunders. He is a pro athlete and you're not going to want to miss, ladies and I'm gentlemen. I'm looking forward to this. When we come back, Joy in My House is going to have Dr. Bill Henderson, Yay. author and one of the founders of Sons of Thunder. You're not going to want to miss. This is Joy in My House, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I want you to stay tuned. We're going to come right back. Hey, hey, shout us out. What's the count? I'm your host. I am WDC. Tune in to WDC Radio on LA Talk Live every Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time for sickle cell trait awareness, lupus, bullying, mental health, and all different aspects of life. 
So tune in to WDC Radio right here on LA Talk Live. Also, you can listen to us on iTunes, Live 365, YouTube, and Ustream. And don't forget Apple TV and Roku right here on LA Talk Live where we're more than just talk. Shout us out. What's the count? Hello, I'm Joel Ramirez. And I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House. On LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio. With a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B. Or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is TJ inviting you to join us every Sunday at 2 p.m. for Veterans Day Live. Join us as we provide info that would help all military personnel. So don't forget to tune in to Veterans Day Live every Sunday at 2 p.m. That's every Sunday at 2 p.m. exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B, Radio Flag, TuneIn Radio, Live 365, AHA Radio, TiVo Radio, and Apple TV Radio, or just watch and listen directly at LATalkLive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. You're listening to the Van Eric Rock Show. I'm your host, Van Eric, daily, Monday through Friday, here only on LA Talk Live. We're more than just talk. Hi, I'm Ro Williams, and I would like to invite you to join GospelRhythms.com every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our show, GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio. Join us as we celebrate Christians around the world in all genres of entertainment, as well as highlight interest stories on men and women who are making a difference and impacting their community. So don't forget to tune in to GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes under R&B or watch us live on Ustream TV. We are Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio on LATalkLive.com. We're more than just talk. We're Heaven's Party here on Earth. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality radio show. I'm here with recording artist and my co-host, Lolita Robinson. Thank you, and I just wanted to say a little break here. Herbert's Lemonade is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's yeah. a sponsor. One of our okay. network sponsors. One of our network sponsors. I am not kidding. Oh, I, I love lemonade. It is delicious. So just wanted to tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got to pay the bills around here, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. But I want to introduce our in-studio guest, yeah. Dr. Bill Henderson. Yeah. He is from the original yeah. Power Team, yeah. known and now known as the Sons of Thunder, and you're also an author. Yes. Welcome to the show. And also known as the Pastor for Disaster. Okay. And we're going to talk about that. that and why. Yeah. But I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule Absolutely. to come out here and, and, and share with us, share yes. your time and your yes. energy. I always like to let our audience and viewers know how we met. We met through... Uh, Lee Benton's ministry we um, did, on the uh, prayer team there at CBS Studios. You had an opportunity to go and share your whole team with us. It was an amazing, amazing we event. We took uh, Big Tommy Sirotnik yeah, was there too. with Sin Ministries. Okay. We got a live studio audience here, so this is awesome. <laughs> right. Garth and Virginia Hickey with uh, Deliverance Hollywood. This is beautiful. And uh, yeah, we were all there. We got to break bricks and blow up hot water bottles and do all that stuff we did 30 years okay, ago. Okay, that's right. See, well, God, we get better. <laughs> okay, we get better. That's right. Joel, I had a guy come up to me in a meeting last night, and he goes, when I was a little kid, oh. <laughs> you really impacted me. <laughs> no. And I'm going, how old are you now? He goes, 57. 
<laughs> Aging oh yourself God. a little bit. How long have we been doing this? Oh my God! It has been like thirty-five years. It has wow. been, huh? That's okay. Thank God we can still do this. <laughs> I love it. So if you're listening on the radio broadcast out there, if you want to have a strength team come in, we can we can put that together for you. So you and do that's something schools? that I I'm want sure you to plug at the yeah. end of the show, and sure. where people can find more information. But we like to let our audience and viewers get to know you again, especially mm. our new ones that are just tuning in, mm-hmm. and, and some of our our youth out there mm-hmm. about your story and about what you've done. So let's go right into it. Where were you born? I was born in East LA. I told you, I there knew you this go. Was be Queen fun. of Angels Hospital, <laughs> That's baby. Right. Oh yeah, I love that. I'm, I'm, I'm a local Yoko. You are a local Yoko. I <laughs> say that. Oh no, you don't. You see, see, that? see I'm a local Yoko. There's nothing new under the sun. See, <laughs> same Holy Ghost, my brother. That's right. That's right. I told you this is gonna be there fun. There is joy in the morning. I here. love it. I can feel it. We're not gonna have a lot to do. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> let's, let's go. Well, let's, let's go. talk about your child being raised here in LA. It's so diverse culturally and and even religiously. Yeah many face out here do you have any brothers and sisters and how was it being raised here oh my gosh i'm an oldest of a uh, yeah there's uh, uh kenny jimmy timmy danny larry my sister marie and and i was the oldest i was the moses of the bunch and wow. i even said we did a little facebook video we went yesterday to the projects in orange county okay where the kids the children are homeless living in the alleys of the motels now uh-huh. even today even today okay. we also targeted a, a family where the the lady's being healed of cancer and she's in bed with an oxygen i have photos of all of this okay but we went in there and uh, chad taylor came in another prophet street preacher okay and we were doing a video and he said how did you get started doing this and i said you know it's interesting you should say that when i was seven eight nine ten my mother would put me in the car and she would make scrambled egg sandwiches put socks toilet paper Oh, toothbrush in a big paper sack like a grocery sack and we would drive around the streets of los angeles and i'd say look mom there's a hobo oh, wow. and she'd say not that one i go why not she goes the lord didn't say mm-hmm. and we drive another block or two i said mom there's another hobo right there and she goes nope not that one mm-hmm. and finally we, you know, either her or I would spot one. Right. She'd say, that's the, that's the one the Lord wants. Okay. Well, yesterday I held up my grocery sack. Oh, man. I said, all these years later, I'm 64 years old now. Wow, you look great. And I said, I'm still taking grocery sacks of food into the highways and byways. You know wow. what's so interesting about that? I'm, I'm glad that we, that we go to Africa and I'm glad that we go to all these other nations right. too. But we still have a quite a bit of work to do here in our own backyard. We have an inner city jungle right here in what in California. That's very true. Los Angeles. Well, let's so, talk yeah. about that. Were Any you, city. Were, yeah. you a fa- were you a church going family? Yes. She had and and been, I'm, thank yeah. you for asking. I grew up Baptist mm. and later when I got really saved I became Baptocostal. Baptocostal. <laughs> okay. Catholicostal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess me Catholicostal. <laughs> so I don't know why but we moved a lot. Yeah. So in the Baptist church. Oh, your father. You, what about your dad? Yeah, was actually, he, he, he my, my mom and him got divorced when I was, like, not even five years old. Okay, so, so I grew up, actually, without a dad. Okay. And uh, uh, moving a lot, the Baptist church will always baptize you. And so yeah. I discovered <laughs> later on a drug <laughs> overdose. Every time you go. Well, watch this. Wow. On a drug overdose, in and out of my body, I realized all those years I thought I was saved, I was not saved. Okay. Because whatever had a hold of my throat, taking me not to heaven, I realized I needed to do something quick, and I'll get into that in a minute. Mm-hmm. So I tell people, you know, you can go in a dry center and come out a wet center. There you go. Because if the conversion has not taken place in the heart yet, mm-hmm. that little from the head to the heart, then then it just hasn't happened yet. So That's powerful. Say uh, that again. N- 1978, right. smoking angel dust. I got away from the Baptist church, away from my Christian upbringing. And I was selling drugs and making drugs and bouncing bars, fighting in the street and doing all that. I think we invented MMA back in the day. I bet you did, yeah. And then somebody said, you know, these look at these crazy white guys. Let's go ahead and just Mm -hmm. put them in a cage. Put them in a cage. cage. (laughs) Make some money off them. That's right. No, we used to, like I was a bar bouncer, so I would fight another bar bouncer from another bar. And whoever won walked away with a fistful of cash, you know, back in business. Anyway, just like the movies. Wow. uh, But uh, Angel does hit town. 
And my arms were too short this to box the, with angel this dust. This was in the, in the 70s. It's an animal tranquilizer, 1978, wow. December. Okay. And I'm smoking away thinking, you know, I'm smoke a half a bag of this like I do everything else. And found out later, one puff would knock you out for 10 hours. Yeah. And I went through that whole half bag through a pipe. Yeah. You out there listening that you used to do what you used to do, you know what shotgunning is. So I was shotgunning through a pipe. And the well, next thing I for know, for those of us that don't know, what is shotgun? Well, you you blow like into breeze? the lid into the pipe, okay, and a big stream of smoke comes out the place where you would puff, all right, and you smell that through your nose. <sighs> it's called shotgun. So anyway, I did that, and it it knocked me out, and then it stopped my heart. I hear my mama's voice. This is my testimony in a nutshell. In my head, when I'm looking at a dead man on the floor. And I'm speaking to some people out there that you've, you've had some near miss, near death experiences. Right. Some of you may have even been brought back like me. And that means God's hands on you. So take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And I hear my mama say in my head, she says, Billy, don't run from Jesus. Run to him. Mm -hmm. Don't run from God. Run to him. I did the 911 prayer. I said, if you save me. I will serve you for the rest of my life. I promise. Were you in the hospital at this point? No, I'm no, in, you, the bedroom, you're, you're man. in the bedroom. You're in the bedroom, and you can feel it. You're going in and out. Of my brothers drug me in. They thought we finally knocked him out because I wouldn't knock out ever. Mm. I drove everybody home always. Mm -hmm. But this angel does this animal tranquilizer. It did the trick. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I they drug me in my bedroom, and I went back into my body, stood up, sober and coherent. 1978, first week of December. Wow. And I just begin to weep and cry and thank God. Mm -hmm. And a couple of days later, my other brother came by and he had an experience in the shower. And next thing you know, there was three of us. And by the way, the Baptist church was praying, all okay. 350 of them. I bet they were. They were praying for these were. three brothers to get right with God. Right. The Bible says that he put a hook in our jaw. And the Bible says he's married to the backslider. And you can, you can run, but you can't hide from Almighty God. Absolutely. His eyes see everything. Proverbs 15, 3 says, the eyes of the Lord see everything. He sees the good and he sees the bad. Where and was your mother? There. Was your mother was your mother living during this time? Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. Well, no, no, no. That's the thing. Okay. She had passed away from cancer in my arms seven years earlier. Oh, so boy. I'm like tripping going, my dead mama's talking to me. Okay. I'm out of my body. What the heck did I just smoke? And then I realized, no, no, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. And I realized God was talking to me through my mother's voice. Yes, he was. And God is talking to you through the Thank host of this radio that. show today, telling you that Jesus Christ is the answer you've been looking for. And you go, but you don't know what my question is. It doesn't make any difference what your question is. The answer is Jesus. Amen. Well, that's not politically correct. You doggone right, it ain't. That's right. No, it's not. It's not. No, it wasn't politically correct when he died on the cross. The the gruesome death that he that wasn't politically correct either, but he did it for us. So yeah, we got to make that stand. Yes. Wow. Well, I'm glad that you're, you're being transparent. I told you, his, he's he's mm. going to take off. because you know a lot of us out there who are struggling or being challenged right. sometimes we rely on every other crutch except for Jesus, Jesus. Right. and we think that any other thing can fulfill that God shaped whole but it's not yeah. it's one thing and one person only mm. and mm. when you really submit to that it changes lives well, like it did yours and that's what we're going to get into right yes. now but also before we go I, w I want people to know that there we had another lady there is life after yes. death Yes, I think that's important to really reiterate that i think people think once we close our eyes that's it it's not so that's a lie from the devil right we're, we're promised eternity and but it's up to us where will we spend that eternity that's right jesus actually spoke more on hell than he did heaven yes he isn't did. that interesting yes he did and so there is a hell to shun there is a heaven to gain right and the bible says there's no other name given whereby man can be saved but at the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. every eye will see, knee bow, and tongue confess that he is Lord. You might be in a jail cell right now. You might be at home. You might be driving your car. You don't even have to wait to the end of this broadcast. And at the end of this broadcast, my dear friend Garth and Virginia are going to sing a song that Jesus will heal all. Mm -hmm. And he's waiting to heal you. That comes from repentance. Then Joel, too, says he wants to restore you. That's the Hebrew word shalam, and it means spirit, soul, body, mind. Every area of your life that's ever been ripped off, mm -hmm. God wants to step into your life and begin the restoration process. The Bible says concerning the word restoration mm -hmm. that when God restores... 
He actually picks us up and carries us to a further place had we never got off track. Wow. Isaiah 59, 19 that's says, right, when right. the enemy comes in, like a flood, like a flood the Spirit yeah. of the Lord raises a standard. It's the I Hebrew word nos, and it means God will, at one point in your life, when you cry out to him, he will stop what's attacking you. He picks you up, and he carries you to a place of promotion, like I said, further down the road had you never got off the track. Oh. Now, if that's not an Amen. almighty, happy God, I'm, that's my yeah. God right there. And if that's that, not restoration, shoo! if that's not restoration, Amen. Well, and out of those two R's, you got to repent first. Here Jesus, I'm sorry. Right. And you got to say, please restore me. He will. And then out of those two R's comes the third R, revival, and turns you into the radical remnant. By God, when God revives you, you are revived. Well, honey, I'm you revived. You got life here. coming out hey. your <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Glory. Amen. I'm not laughing. I'm praising the Lord. You know what? We were already having. I knew the Holy Spirit. But I, I said, Lord, he said, just sit back and let me go because he's really ministering. Well, I know when I had the opportunity to wow. meet him as you gave your sermon and your, and your message at CBS Studios. It was powerful. Mm -hmm. It was powerful. And for those of you who are listening out there and, and having the opportunity to hear this broadcast, God's speaking to you right now. Mm -hmm. You just got to allow him in. Yeah, you do. And I think we always try and push him out. Yeah. Oh, but that's not that message isn't for me. Yeah, I relate to it. Right. But that's not for me right now. It's for everybody. And it's for right, right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. It is for the present. Yeah. And you I know. think a lot of people don't live in the present. They live in the past of what they've done or they live right. in the fear of the future of what's going to be instead of just in the moment where God wants them to be. Hosea 4, 6, Joel, uh, says these words, my people, so God's talking about his properties. Mm -hmm. He says, my people perish. Gosh. The word perish means cut down, brought to nothing, made silent. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I love that. My people are cut down, brought to nothing, and made silent for a lack mm -hmm. of knowledge. knowledge or mm -hmm. a rejection, catch that, mm -hmm. of knowledge. Well, yeah, I guess, you know, you do need to know a couple of things in life, sure enough. No, what you need to know is who you know. Mm -hmm. That word knowledge is the word yada. It means intimacy with God. Adam knew Eve and kids came. Mm -hmm. Adam, it, they used the word yada. Adam was intimate mm -hmm. with Eve. When we're intimate with God, it's called prayer. Right. It's Amen. called asking and listening. It's Amen. called reading the scripture. Amen. And see, people reject the intimacy. Yes, Why is that? J James says that, that this book of the law is a reflection. And it shows you who you are in light of God's mm -hmm. laws and principles and teachings. Mm -hmm. And so people, they see who they are. They really see who they are not. And they're, they're so far away, they don't realize don't God, God can take care of all that. But they reject the time in prayer. Matthew 7, there are people in these last days that says many. The Greek word is compounded, multiple, many, 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 many people are going to say, Lord, look what I've done. Now, I have name. a radio broadcast I too. I love it. And, and I got a radio show. I got a church. No. I got a power team. I cast I've out won demons. Souls. I cast out demons. I've done great and mighty things. And I'm paraphrasing here a little bit. And we preached and we did all that in your name. Matthew 7 started my next book that's not done yet. Okay. Matthew 7 is, on, is about this. Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew, I never you. knew you. That word knew is gnosko that's in the, the Greek. Intimate. That's the intimate? It's from the root word out of yes. Hebrew, yada. So wow. it's intimacy. In other words, Jesus said this. You didn't talk to me daily. Right. You didn't have a prayer life. Mm -hmm. You didn't read my word. Mm -hmm. But you went out and you looked good. But you went out you wagged the Bible. Yeah. You, you know, you in, in my your, name, in, in your my own name. flesh, and in your own. Spirit, how scary but is that verse? We we can actually do a lot of stuff, and everyone's like, "Man, look how powerful that ministry is." Well, if you follow them home and see if they have devotions, then you'll know. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? Amen. You can't have a public ministry without a private one, private time with the Lord. He says, if you enter yeah. your prayer closet secretly, right. God says, then I will reward you openly. openly. And that word re reward is remunerator. Mm -hmm. And it means that he'll make everything in our life happen very quickly, including finances. Oh, amen. I claimed oh, that I one. Felt, uh, did you feel the Holy Ghost yes, on that I one? I did. I did. But you know, in you said something, and, and I think it's really important. The spirit is just heavy. 
it's I, I was reading this book because I, I couldn't walk for like eight months. I fell. Praise the Lord. God mm. used it. It mm. wasn't him, the enemy. But I read this book. It's a little book called In This Ministry, This Ministry That We Have. And he was talking about prayer and how Jesus' ministry was like a pendulum. It was totally with the Lord and then out. It was quiet time with, with the Father, getting the power, getting that relationship, and then going forth. And he said something, and I want to get back Somebody called the pastor and said, is the pastor busy? And she said, oh, no, he's just in the prayer chapel. Let me go get him. Oh, Lord. That really touched me so. You know, I pastored a that. year at Assembly God Church in San Diego back right. in the 90s. And, and they got these windows cut in the door. And I told her, I said, when my coat is blocking that window and you can't see me, right. you can't talk to me. There you go. And it took quite a while for everybody to get that message. Okay. You can put yellow stickies on my door and I'll get back to everything. Luke 2.49, getting back to Springboard and what you said. Right. G, they, they were looking for Jesus for several days. They finally find him. And he says these words. Do you not know that I must be about my father's business? You look that up in the Greek. And it means I must stay connected in intimacy with the father. Mm -hmm. And I must be in relationship with fellow man. Amen. There's your cross. Intimacy with God, relationship with man. And it says that Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in strength, in understanding, and just everything you need comes from intimacy. There you go. Woo! Thank you. Give myself a hug. No, 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 no. But I mean, Amen. listen. Amen. We got it. So we got I got joy backwards. in the morning. I can't help can. myself here. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> And usually, Van Eric is usually sitting there just kind of like, okay, he looks energized right now. Come on. Well, we had church before the radio <laughs> broadcast. Yes, we did. Amen. But that is a perfect segue because God did uh, replenish you. God did give you your heart's desires. Because after that, you got to meet and be a part of the original power team. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that came yeah. about. We were at TBN taping because uh, my brother and I, in those days, we had a ministry called Soldiers for Jesus. I we I were that. we were a street ministry, and okay. we still are, believe yeah. it or not. Actually, Jesus, uh, Barner Research shows that Jesus 30 times spoke in a church, and he usually brought reproof. But 165 times, Jesus was in the highways and the byways. Okay. Jesus says in Matthew 4, 19, follow me. And I I'm will making. make you fishers of men. That's so right. I'm, I'm still trying to do that. I'm well, trying what do you to mean by Jesus. reproof? For some of our audience, you are really educating and teaching. What do you mean he bought reproof? Well, that's a that's a that's a deep subject right okay, there. Fine. There's a lot of things in the church today okay. that that you know a lot of churches are deacon possessed and and stuff. Okay. So uh, you, you know it just it would depend. If you just read, Jesus called them whitewashed tombs and vipers, snakes, so and hypocrites. He went out there and he because it was it religion. Was. Right. It was man's search for God, and he's trying to say, I am. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, if any man thirst, come to me and drink, and mm -hmm. out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. He was, of course, talking about the Holy Spirit Amen. at that time. Okay. But yeah, we were at TBN taping, and uh, uh, Jay Jones came over there and he says, you guys ever heard of these muscle heads? And we go, who? John, somebody, and something, and they break handcuffs. I remember, because I, okay. I received the Lord in the 70s, so I was so watching they, they were over there making videos, breaking okay. bricks. So yeah. me and my brother went over there, so John sized us up, and he said, so Y'all look like y'all can do a couple of brick breaks. <laughs> I, I actually, as far as I know, I hold the world's record. I, I should have called the, the Guinness Book, only so I could use that as a reference to get people's attention. Yeah. But my son, well, I can put you on a phone with a pastor i broke seven pair of handcuffs all at the same time once wow. are you serious and then i doubled the martial art triple break i remember wow. the power so, uh, it was on friday nights and i you know i was in the sport record, you know i remember watching you guys do this goofy stuff but i just oh, yeah. i didn't <laughs> well i tell you that goofy stuff will get people like this i know right <laughs> <laughs> God uses it. I was, at, God I was at Kim Clement's studio the other day, and the drummer, Sunil, you know? Right. And, uh, and so he does this thing called Code Breakers. So he was doing his part on doing the research <laughs> on the prophetic words. And then he goes, I'm so thankful for people that just don't quit. He's like Dr. Bill right there. He's still doing it. And he's, he came to my school and, and broke stuff. And he talked to me, and he said, and I gave my heart to Jesus. Okay. And Kim Clement's going, Huh? Who? Who? Bill Henderson? <laughs> you go, come here, get up on stage. So I walked up to Snell and I went, son. And we oh, hugged. Oh. <laughs> but you know what is true? How yeah. are you going to get the men? Because the men, I think Jesus is yeah. wimpy. So yeah, God yeah. said, I'll show you my men are not wimps. 
Yeah. Okay. No, no, really. I think it's powerful. Well, and to answer Joel's question, too, I mean, when I got saved, I didn't have a high school education. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a carpet layer. It's interesting. No wonder I wrote a book on the remnant. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> but it's God's radical remnant. And I'm like going, God, all I know how to do is fight and break stuff and kick stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be really good at Muay Thai because I've been knees. That, I feel the exact same way. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel the same way. Now, oh, the Lord Ashley's got to come on. There's too much testosterone. In Ashley's got to come on. Wisdom. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Somebody's got to be a Davidic army in here and break something. <laughs> come on. Hallelujah. So he puts me on the power team, and now all these that's years right. later, I'm still, you know. He's still doing your works. thing. Well, I feel, I the, that's phone you. Book. I feel the same way. I've been teaching 22 years. Now. Oh, I've my been gosh. For 26 really? years of my life. It's all I know how to do. And I tell God, God, when are you going to take me to the next <laughs> level? When are you going to take me <laughs> yeah, out of what I do? You might not, my brother. And you know what he does? He brings in more clients. I have so many clients, I'm turning people away. Oh, right. my gosh. But yeah, what he's, he's doing, he's using that. He's yeah. forging me. He's breaking me down. He's making me submit to his will yeah. there you so go. he can use me. I told Big there Tommy, who's sitting here in the audience, uh, Tommy Sarodnik yeah, with Sin Tommy Ministries, even. I said, dude, we are like the Expendables. You saw that movie, The Expendables? I love it, yes. You remember when Arnold goes, how are we getting home? And they pointed <laughs> to this old beat-up aircraft. And somebody else said, man, that's an antique. <laughs> Arnold looks at the rest of the team and he goes, have you looked at us lately? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at big Tommy. I'm going, Tommy, when are we ever going to stop doing this? And he, he says, Still well, we may never. Thing. And I said, maybe we ought to be Sons of Thunder, the Expendables version. <laughs> <laughs> so do you get a lot of young young audience? Is it more young people that are coming to yeah, see? Actually, yeah. Actually, the guy that does the Krav Maga, what's his name? I forgot his name, but yeah, I, yeah, but but he wants me and Tommy to come back and do another demonstration like what you saw that mm -hmm. night and what did you to see? the you uh, twenty year me. anniversary of the martial arts school that he teaches. Wow! So that's in the mix. And anyone listening, uh, can I give a phone of number course. out? If you want to dial seven one nine three three eight five nine nine nine. And we can make arrangements to uh, come out and do a demonstration with you guys. And hopefully your church, too. That would be yeah, awesome. Yeah, because believe it or not, we go to churches. And believe it or not, there are still folks sitting there that still need to get saved. Mm -hmm. There you Amen. go. Yeah. There you go. Well, I wanted to touch on wow. some of your accolades before we go into your new book. And this is where I want to spend some time on. But you have your doctorate in divinity. You've been a regular guest uh, on the and minister on Trinity Broadcasting Network since 1984 and many others. I, I send people there. I say just type my name in, go to the oh, archives, yeah. and you will see many videos for right. 30 some years. But I thought this was interesting. Uh, you regularly ministered with Ar Arthur Blessed oh. and carried the cross from Los Angeles yeah, to Brazil. Arthur. Yeah, we went what there too. We went there. Well, I've been knowing Arthur for many years. And when you, they did station number ministry. eight at TBN we were there and met Arthur and there was a bunch of uh, gangsters that tried to stop the parade that we were doing with the cross I looked at my brother and I said I ain't been saved that long I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna handle this old school <laughs> there you go. and so I let me roll up my sleeve well, in the eyes my of, friend in the used to let me go dig up my old man <laughs> in the eyes of eternity yay okay yep. we're maybe saved 38 years but that ain't that long that's not that long you gotta handle business you just <laughs> handle business <laughs> Oh, I'll get some letters on that one. No, though. You're, speak, <laughs> no. you're speaking to me. So I do, yeah. And you're so I walked up there and I said, who's the boss? Well, some guy, blankety blank, blank. I said, okay, you and me are going to box, and then I'm going to whip the rest of your team. And I said, but they're walking through. So I moved them politely but firmly. I motioned them through, and I'm saying, God, I don't want to fight. <laughs> but if I have up. to, I want to be anointed like Samson for That's sure. That's right. There's Amen. eight guys, and they're all about bigger than me. Yep. When I turned around, they were all gone. <laughs> they thought, you're so crazy. Paul, Paul you're just crazy. Paul Krauss <laughs> goes, you come get in the car with us. The next thing I know, I'm sitting there with Rosie Greer, <laughs> Nikki Cruz. Oh, my God. Go. Uh, <laughs> all the forefathers. Hey. Football, my mind's playing. Ro Rosie Greer, Nikki Cruz. Who else was there? I can't remember. The very, I mean, a lot of well-known people that are. They were in the car while you, oh, cause, because Arthur Blessed, well, you were they, Well, we became the bodyguards for <laughs> TVN <laughs> and the chauffeur. <laughs> we started wearing all kind of hats in the 80s, you know. But I wanted to touch on this because not this only. This is hilarious. Yeah. Well, your ministry was. I wonder was, how was God can use anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the and I'm proof of that. I resemble that. <laughs> I'm you anything. were on the streets saving souls. Wow. But then 
God anointed you and you had your own show. You I did for about a year, word on the street. Word on the street. And what I would do, Joel, is we really go all over the world. On. You were so good. You're keeping us <laughs> yeah. on track. Yeah, he does. <laughs> we go all yeah. over the world. And what I do is I do interviews with people. Right. And, and this is word on the street. But what they didn't realize, it's his word. Right. Oh, it's so they God's thought, word so they thought they were on just the check. street. They don't realize it's a Jesus thing. I say, hey, I want to ask you two questions, uh, oh, no. and this won't take but about no. two minutes. No, and so, didn't. stay with me on this. And the, my camera be right there, and I've got oh. a long thing. These people just off the yeah. street, random. So I just, you've got a long thing. They tend to want to talk into it because it's right <laughs> in their face. So I just said, if you died right now, heaven forbid, would you go north or south, heaven or hell? Oh, I didn't even say heaven. <laughs> And you get all kind of answers. Wow. And some of them are cocky and goofy. Yeah. And some of them are like, like I don't know. Uh, no, nobody knows that, dude. Well, that just, now I know where they're at. Right. And I would just take it from there. And I would catch live, Joel, just all over the world. While I was interviewing outside of a pub in Scotland. Wow. People are walking by demon possessed and hissing and doing all that. But the person I'm talking to has got tears rolling down mm. their face. Wow. Mm. And I says, let me tell you what happened to me. And I just, and I say, you know, on a drug overdose, mm -hmm. I'm out of my body. And I and I heard my mom say, run to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I said, I know that prayer. And I said, do you think I'm serious? I said, look at that tattoo. And I said, what does that say? And I'd get him to say that, that Jesus is Lord. And I'd say, if you take this hand right now. Now, did you notice that? Mm -hmm. If I look at your hand and hold my hand out there, this is a technique to winning souls, but it works. Who lives inside of us? Jesus. Okay. So it's not just me holding your hand. Mm. Let oh, him box with Jesus. Wow. Let him box with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then I would just say, I just release that anointing on you. I loose you mm. in Jesus' name. Wow. And I'd say, say these words with me. And I would say, Jesus, help. And I'm led different ways to pray. You did this on the street for how long? Uh, I put the ministry? For 38 years, I've been doing this on the street. Wow. And so you're still doing it. Do you know, if you're mm -hmm. listening and you want to be a soul winner, I'm going to give you a secret, secret verse. And it's in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Exodus 4.12. Mm -hmm. A bricklayer gave this to me. He said, Bill, are you winning any souls? My first week saved. I go, dude, I tried to talk to somebody, and they started damning God. And the next thing I knew, I had them by the Adam's apple. I shoved them up the wall. I'm getting ready to pop them. Oh. And, and my brother tapped me on the shoulder and said, I don't think we're supposed to do it like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's feet's dangling. And I thought, I said, then I felt bad. And I said, shoot. I said, I'm not doing this. This is not my call. So I started, oh, I wanted, man, I said, right. can I drive the bus? And I became the bus driver oh, for a year. Oh, see, so you knew what God was yeah. calling you to do not to but do. But he said, but are you giving God his word so he can watch over his word, perform his word in and through you, Bill? And I'm going, I don't know what you're talking about. He says, listen, Exodus 4.12 says, go. Mm -hmm. He says, if you go in between services, this will work. So I'm, a, you know, I'm a why I said, really? Let's, okay, let's do this. Go, and then what's going to happen? God says he'll be with your mouth and teach you what to say. Mm -hmm. I right. said, I'm putting that to the test. We prayed. I went to Sears in San Bernardino between services of the Baptist church. Of course, I was becoming Baptocostal too, oh, so I was cheating goodness. a little bit that way. Right. And I started talking, and I heard stuff come out of my mouth. I go, and they go, how do you know that? And I'm going, I have no idea. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I heard God say things right. to me. Mm -hmm. I start getting downloads, and I start getting words and knowledge. I start knowing things about people. And I'm going, how is this happening? Mm -hmm. What is this? I say, y'all come to church, and I'll buy you a meal afterwards. They both came, walked the aisles. I led them into prayer sooner. They walked the aisle that night in this evening service and gave their life to the Lord. Amen. It's never stopped since. People say, well, we just need to pray for revival. You, no, no, no. Wake up. Mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago, Jesus hung on the cross, and revival is here since then. Anybody, anywhere, at any time can give their life to Jesus. Anybody, anywhere, anytime. Me and Garth were in Philippines recently. I don't care where you are geographically. When you talk about Jesus, they can be born again. When you talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they can be filled with evidence of another language coming out their mouth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those, so it, this one's harder. Here. It's easy here. overseas, but he, you can actually here? be healed. You well, actually yeah, can. I think here because we're not spending time over. I think in the other countries, they really know the Lord. That's all they have. They don't have all the Xboxes and the, the technology, the technology the, the that we the have. The distractions that That's we have that the enemy has here. Yeah. I mean, I hear God moves powerfully in other countries. Well, let's talk he about does. that. Yeah. Because yeah. you have a very powerful title, Pastor for Disaster. Yes. You have been at 
places have had horrendous tragedies. Hurricane Katrina, Rita, Ike, Sandy, earthquakes in Mexico, Haiti, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Japan, the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about well, that ministry and how you go out there and are on the front lines. Even the scripture says many times that people find Christ in a crisis. You know it. Okay. Unfortunately, that's and the truth. Jo Jude says some are saved by love and some saved by fear. Mm -hmm. And some people need the hell scared out of them. That's right. And sometimes that comes through situations, disasters. Mm -hmm. And so what we like to do is I put a team together, Gar's part of that team, and, and we go boots on the ground. And when they just lost a loved one through death because of a hurricane, a flood, an uh, earthquake or whatever, or their car's gone, their house is gone, we just look at them and say, you know, there is hope. Mm -hmm. And and then start sharing scriptures. Like, let me I say, I know how you feel. Uh, I felt the same way at different times in my life. I, I, I lost a daughter through through a long five-year battle of cancer with leukemia. Uh, I, I've had situations in my life that's been very difficult. I, I, eight years ago, in Ju uh, June, I crashed my Harley Davidson. Uh, I was dead, my neighbor said, and a two-year-old Presbyterian came because his wife made him. Somebody said, thank God for wives. Yeah. His wife said, pray for him. Mm -hmm. and, and a two-year-old, non-spirit-filled, Presbyterian, big, 300-pound Indian, put his hands on my chest. And mind you, my head was split open. It took 17 staples, 200 stitches. I destroyed an ultra-classic electric light. I, the, it was it was this bad. Was eight years my, ago? Eight years ago, June, yeah. Okay. I saw yeah. the article. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then my bike drug me 150 feet face down. I was tore up from the neck up and, uh, and other places. Mm. And he said, you will live and not die. You will live and not die. You will live and not die. He said about seven minutes later, my eyes popped open. By the way, that eye was all the way down there swinging below my chin. And people ask me today, they say, does that eye still see? And I go, of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not make, but you know what? When you were talking, when he talked about your escalades, you want to have the anointing of the Lord? You've got to be in the trenches you this do. is not stuff that you have okay you have your doctorate of divinity but you've also been where god's people are and okay, you've walked this. through hell i'm glad you brought that up sister because what you know they always say well if you do this and you go to school you, go, you, go, you can get a little ordained mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll be your covering a little <laughs> and, and matthew 4 19 jesus said follow me yeah, just lean toward me just do a just go this way instead right. of that way he said i will make you it's all in that book god's radical remnant it's the greek word poeo mm -hmm. i'll make you poeo and it means the holy spirit touches you mm -hmm. changes your status watch this and ordained you with the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I would rather be ordained by God than, than any piece of paper hanging on the Amen. wall. See, I give very me. little. I mean, I got See, those. I'm listening. To, I'm, uh -huh. I'm listening to you for but your if money. If the Holy Ghost ordains you, you, you know what walked me out of ICU? Joel 2:26. This is a word for somebody listening right now. You got a situation. That's impossible. The doctor says it's impossible. You can't leave. You can't walk. You're paralyzed. Right. You need a halo, and you need seven or eight or ten operations. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. I gotta. And I said, Jesus, you heard what they said. What do you say? And mm -hmm. God speaks to me, and I already did the word study. He said, Joel 2.26 says in the last days mm -hmm. that God is dealing and will deal, and we're in the last days. Yeah, we if are. I read these scriptures. You were in the no, last days. we are in. <laughs> he says, I will deal with the remnant. Watch this long word, wondrously. It's the word in Hebrew, para. And it means whatever's impossible, when the Holy Ghost touches it, mm -hmm. it changes to be impossible, mm -hmm. to be possible. Mm -hmm. I walked out of ICU 23 hours later. Wow. Out. My neurologist chasing me down the thing there. Mr. Henderson, where the, do you think you're going? <laughs> I said, I'm leaving. Who told you you could leave? I said, Jesus. He goes, where the, is Jesus? I <laughs> talked to him because I'm the neurologist. Wow. I said, I've been trying to tell you, Doc, I'm a preacher. And the Lord spoke to me, mm -hmm. and I stood on a promise that he would deal with me wondrously. And he's touched. I mean, I proof to you. You cannot even squeeze your right hand because you broke it number seven. It's hooked to your right arm. And if oh. I, you can. And I took his hand. I went. <laughs> and he went to his knees. He said, dear God, Mr. Henderson, it's a miracle. Amen. He looked at all the doctors and nurses and said, let Mr. Henderson go. 
ว้าวเลทิมมินเดทโฮมว้าวว้าวว้าว So if you have an impossible situation, listening audience, wow. you might not even be saved, but listen, claim Joel 2:26, and while you're at it, claim the fact that Jesus loves you, died for you, spilt His blood for you. He wants to be a part of your life. Do you know that God named all of us sitting in this live radio broadcast? He named us before the stars were hung. Yes, He did. Before the earth was made, the sun and the moon, etc., the galaxies. He named us and gave a plan for our life. Yes, He did. He named my sons oh. in the womb. Amen. He named each one of my sons in the womb. Yeah. Tell me what they were. Well, He named them before the stars yes, were hung. Yes, He did. Yes, He did. Thank you for <laughs> and that. And then He let you in on it. Yes, He did. You know what? <laughs> Thank neat? you. And how interesting that is. So Lita's beautiful. Talks about that. Really? And says that she also named he, me. Yes. I always, the Lord gave me the name Joel for his son. But when I had my sons in dreams, he never gave me a Joel. And then mm, this is this. my son, look my spiritual this. son. Look at this. And the Lord t told me that about four years after we were together, he said, that's your son, wow. Joel. Wow. Is that amazing? Is that amazing? Oh, no, no. This is, this I know. Is Ladies and amazing? gentlemen, this is Joy in my house. We're going to go to a quick commercial wow. break. But when we come back, you're not going to want to miss Dr. Henderson, Dr. Bill Henderson's book, God's Radical Remnant. You're not going to want to miss. This is Joy in my house. I want you to stay tuned. We're going to come right back. Wow. Amen. Well, I can just go to... Back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality radio show with the touch of recovery. A reality radio show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who shares. Woo! I'm joined here by recording artist Lolita Robinson. Wow. And our in studio guest, Dr. Dr. Bill, Bill Henderson. Henderson. And I gotta <laughs> confess, <laughs> we are high on the most high. We are <laughs> and Joy in the house, I gotta confess. Hey, <laughs> I've, been, I've, I've been high like that all week. Uh, I'll tell, tell you what. Man, this is really, I'm laughing, but I am so blessed. Blessed. You I have Holy Ghost boldness. I mean, yeah. the Lord took your took your personality, your gifts, and He just That's let right. them fly. It's awesome. He to, uh, needs people like you. Yeah, He, he does. uses people like you. In Orange County. Yeah, you do. With all the HBO did a documentary on homeless children. Yeah, let's and get to back go to that. reach out to that audience, and and the people in the motels that these motels are like twenty dollars a day, twenty. And they're still, they're and they're, still and there. And they're just trapped there. Okay. And some of them, sometimes, I'm talking to doctors and lawyers that went through a divorce or some weird something. Right. And they're educated and they're well-dressed even. But, you know, and then something happened there. Somebody sees the bank account or whatever. And then all of a sudden, there they are in a situation. Mm -hmm. So being a disaster pastor going all over the world, uh, it can happen in our family. You know, I, I called a family member. My, I had a brother that went to be with the Lord a year ago. And his fiance was having some issues. And I called her yesterday and I said, hey, even though you guys never got to marry Mary, it, Timmy was going to marry you and you're part of our family. Mm. And I said, I want to pray with you over the phone. And she was just like, oh. are you real? I said, yeah, you're family. You, you know, you're Amen. part of us. And if you're listening to this radio broadcast, you're family too. <laughs> oh, I'm not one of them there Christians. <laughs> well, you can be. You can do that today. <laughs> Just don't change that uh, dial. Pastor of disaster. Well, I want to talk wow. about your book because I think this is a powerful book that people are going to get a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the title. Well, yeah. God's Radical Remnant. God one day spoke to me years ago while I was laying carpet. And I was cutting up the carpet. And the Lord says, when you're done cutting, what's left over? I said, the remnant. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, wow, I mean, this, the Lord was just so, and I just got off of a small fast. And then he said, what happens to the remnant? And I said, well, it either gets put in front of the front door or in behind the closet. 
And he says, and what happens in those two places? I said, well, in the closet, it collects dust. dust yeah. I'm just having a conversation with the Lord. I said, from the front door, people just wipe their feet on it. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. said, I'm coming back for the remnant. Mm -hmm. I did a word study. It's the oh, word wow. so read, Joel. And it means those of you, we, me and Tommy were talking about this yesterday and Garth many times. It, it, do you walk with a limp? I want to know you. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you're just all perfect in a cup of coffee, That's you right. might go want to join the first church of oh, the Zuma Zuma. Wow. <laughs> because there the remnant go. has been through some stuff. Yeah, it says it's people right. who's been through many crises, yeah. but survive. <laughs> people that's been knocked down, but somehow gets back up. Let's join my house here. And, and the wow. final, um, still the thunder here, because here's why God allows things in our life that we wouldn't sign up for. This is the reason. Watch this. Because if we survive whatever difficulties it is, he said he'll never leave us or forsake us. It is someone who dies to pride. Pride got the angel kicked out of heaven that became Satan. Give That's me right. pride. Pride. Give me pride. Okay. So when we die to pride and it yeah. truly becomes and he takes us not down. our yeah. way, it becomes That's Yahweh. Right. That's exactly right. And you go, right. well, Amen. you know, I, uh, 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 but I just can't forgive so. And I said, That's the problem. You. And you're right. You can't forgive. But Galatians 2.20 says, It's not I that does the work of forgiveness and restoration right. and speaking blessings on your Amen. enemies. It's Christ in us. That's right. And when we let the Holy Ghost, you asked me earlier before the broadcast, what scripture would you tell people when they're going through stuff? 1 Peter 5.7, one of my faves of all time. Jesus says, cast your care. Yeah. If you look up that word care, it's the same word here in Luke 2. If you look up the word care, it's the Greek word merimna. that has 32 negative meanings. Meanings. Fear, concern, worry, doubt, no trust, uh, oppression, depression, possession, right. uh, wow. sickness, disease, tribulation. If you give that to God, watch what he says. I will care for you. Here's what he does. These five trump those 32. Right. He says, I will bring you liberty, freedom, joy, grace unmerited with my favor. Amen. Favor. Amen. So look, Amen. you give God your garbage, and He will give you His glory, and all of that is in my book. What? What? <laughs> Come on, somebody now. <laughs> you can go to wow. a, a radio broadcast. Yeah. Really quick, I do not want to run out of time. Where yeah. can people find right. more information? They can how to purchase the book. Type in God's Radical Remnant, Doctor Bill That's Henderson, beautiful. on Amazon, Incredible. and get it there. You can go to my radio broadcast. It's called Faith, where me and Tommy and, and Garth, my team is here. We're all a team. We all have our own separate ministries. Type in faith105fm.com. You can watch me and Tommy break bricks, and you can listen to Garth worship, which he's going to do. And by the way, if you've got a disease in your body, if you've got pain in your body, if you've got an issue that needs to be changed at the close of this broadcast, when, when Garth and Virginia play the song, Jesus Heals You All, Put your hand on the radio, stretch your hand towards where the music is coming from, Amen. and receive a touch from God. Amen. Well, ask him about, whoa. Well, I wanted to just touch on this because you had an amazing conference with Terrell Owens. I couldn't attend. I had yes. prior engagements. Yes, Tim Story's church. Oh, yes. man. But you were the keynote speaker, and I wanted to talk about that. Actually, Terrell was. Oh, Terrell was. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I, me and Tommy, I think we thought we were speaking, but... Mm -hmm. We're just being lined up for other men's conferences. There you go. Wow. But Terrell, he brought it. And and you know what the theme, Tommy, you remember that day? The theme that day was my people perish for a lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. And that's wow. what you were just, so, yeah. yeah. And so with knowledge of God, what comes from that? Hope. Hope. Hope yeah. deferred makes the heart sick. It sure does. But when the answer comes, whoo, there's joy in the morning. Come on, so well, you got to tell us about the joy in our house. <laughs> 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 Glory. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my gosh, well, yeah. You, Dr. Bill, you've been all over the world. You've ministered to countless people on the street, to disaster uh, situations. What would you tell somebody right now who's being challenged, yeah. who doesn't know where their faith lies? They don't know if there's a Jesus. Yeah. But they're hurting and they're searching. What would you say to them because of your experience, because of the contacts that you've made in your life? Yeah. What would you say to them to just bring them maybe a little bit of hope, a little bit of direction? Well, God is an all-knowing God. And like we said earlier, he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, fear not, for I am your exceeding great reward. Mm -hmm. And that's that word remunerator. 
we all live, myself included, all of us live in the worst economic times this globe oh, called do. Earth has ever seen. Yeah, and it's prophesied to possibly get worse. Yeah, yeah. But Deuteronomy 8.18 says, God gives you power to get wealth to establish his covenant. Mm -hmm. That Hebrew word means if you listen to the Holy Ghost, God will show you something to do different than you've been doing. Like it says in the Hebrew, like a chameleon changes color right. to survive, exist, and prosper. God says, if you promise to establish my covenant, I'll show you something different to do to survive, exist, and prosper. I go. would claim yeah. to the listening audience, if I were yeah. you, like I'm doing, claim Deuteronomy 8.18. Okay. And no, the Bible says that God says, come now and let us reason uh, together. That's my favorite says scripture. Says the Lord. That's my, I speak that all the time to people. That's my favorite scripture. Amen. God wants to talk. Reason. He wants to that's reason That's why they try to us. say God's a woman. Come on, somebody. He is. Come on. Uh -huh. he is. He no. Is. He is. No, ladies do talk more than men. We, we do, do a thousand a day. Y'all do. do what? 10,000. 10,000. Yeah, yes. yeah. You know, he's mama and papa. He sure is. He, he parties. He's, he does everything. He's yeah. sacred. He's yes. jazz. He's everything. He's awesome. You know, Psalm 91, he that dwells. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to cry he, in the, in the shelter the of the on Most this? High. Go will ahead. Dwell. Say it. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I held on to that for the whole time when I fell. I will say of the Lord. I don't know that part. You Sec finish verse it. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, Lord, he's my refuge. He's my refuge. My fortress. My fortress. My God. My God. In him will I trust. In him will I trust. I'm going to quickly give it to you in the, he in the Hebrew here. Very quickly. Watch oh. this. He that stays connected in prayer to the secret place, the holy of holies. That's where you actually don't talk. <laughs> Just get quiet and listen. He that stays connected in the holy hole. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God, El Elyon, the God of all gods, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, El Shaddai, the breasty one, the female side of God, mm -hmm. the provider. Mm -hmm. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my oh, God, God, Elohim. In him will I trust. Elohim oh. is the creator God. If something needs to be created, like my hip socket when I was five, I got healed when Oral Roberts sprayed. My leg grew back two inches. We didn't even get a chance to go there. Is also the God of the remnant. Mm. So two verses has three names of God with three different provisions in two verses in Psalm 91. I tell everybody, pray Psalm 23, pray Psalm 91, and pr pray Psalm for upcoming. Psalm 83.3, when I do disaster events, it says that God will protect us, the cherished ones. Hebrew words, Tosaphan, God will make you invisible to the enemies of hell. And they're coming. And keep you alive. And, and they, they are, are coming. They are yeah, coming. We, they are we, uh, we'll Sometimes we'll do an end time oh, prophecy yeah. one. Wow. Amen. Thank yeah. you. Uh, that was Bill. such a yeah. personal word. Thank you. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Amazing. Yes. yes. The show is coming to a close. We like to ask this of all of our guests. The premise of the show is the joy that we have in the midst of our challenges, in the midst of our praise, our successes. What does joy in my house mean to you in today's day and age? You know, I was talking with Tommy and, and my team and stuff. And one of the joyful things for me is that I'm still alive. Oh, how long And any, if you're listening to this broadcast, you're still alive. It's that alive. means God's got something for me and you to do. And let me tell you something. We were created to worship Almighty God. Amen. If you'll start worshiping Him, the word worship means to study. Mm -hmm. You study God like a guy wants to take a girl out. He starts studying that girl. <laughs> what kind of chocolate Hello? you like? Hello? What Look kind of flowers do you there like? You go. Hello? We should go to Jesus and say, what do you like? Hello? What do you want? <laughs> and he's going to say one thing. Time. Just time. Just, just talk time. to me. And after you talk to me, go just tell somebody. Time. Amen. When Garth sings in Virginia right now, They're the anointing sing. of God's going to yeah. flood through your radio and touch you in any area of your life. Amen. Dr. Bill, once again, yeah. thank you for coming on the show. You spoke Ooh. directly to me. You know what thank happened you. today, you know? Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joy in my house. I want you to catch us live every Sunday here at noon on WWWLA Talk Life with life-changing stories of God working in people's life with talents that will inspire you and you don't want to miss. But before we go, we're going to close out the show. Would you like to make an introduction to our praise and worship yes, for this, this day? Yes, this is Deliverance Ministry. 
Garth and Virginia Hickey, and they do uh, in Los Angeles area, they do Tuesday night home church. They're available to come to your church. And so is Garth, uh, excuse me, uh, my friend Big Tommy Sorodnik with Sin Ministries. And, and Garth, go ahead, what's your, uh, what's your contact there? Oh, um, Garth Hickey Ministries, uh, dot com, mm -hmm. or okay. Garth Hickey Ministries at gmail dot com. Yes, right. and Hickey he's a good man in the Philippines. He was right. a good bodyguard. On Joy in My House, here we go. You guys have a blessed day. Enjoy. None were too sinful, none were too sick, none too ill mannered. Weary or weak None were too old Too big or too small Jesus heals them all No mere disease could stand up to his face No sin known to man Could weaken his grace to bind up the wound of that sickening fall Jesus heals them all Jesus heals them all Jesus heals them all Ready now to pour holy wine and oil. Jesus heals them all. 